Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to share three fun review activities and games that you can play with your K through two students to review math. Usually these May and June months are all about review, 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 and really getting students to think about the skills that they touched upon towards the beginning of the year, especially in math. Not all of our skills necessarily build upon one another, unlike in literacy where, you know, if we're learning letter names and sounds, it's because we're going to learn CVC words, and then it expands to this and to that. And there are some of those elements with number sense into addition, but in math, generally speaking, there are a lot of different skills that your students will have to learn. So my plan for this video is just to share three easy and fun activities to kind of tie it all together, get students up, get them moving, get them having fun, and get them reviewing. If you're ready for these ideas, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Math review activity number one is going to be a solve the room activity. Now, I like this type of activity for a whole bunch of different reasons, but in order to play this, all you're going to need is a bunch of chart paper, you can grab bulletin board paper, just like a big piece of paper, and some different areas around the room. You can tape up the chart paper on the walls, you can put them at tables, um, however you wanna do it, you'll want about five to eight different chart papers, and you are going to pair up your students for this activity. This is one where you want students working together so they can talk to each other and kind of just build their math sense with one another. All you need for this activity are some review math problems, but you wanna make sure they're not problems that you can just solve in one way. They're going to be problems where students need to write down a few different answers, right? Or there needs to be a few different answers or a few different ways to solve the problem because students' goals are going to be when they get to each math problem, they're going to challenge themselves to find a different way to solve it. As for what problems to put on the chart paper, I will give you some first grade examples just off the top of my head here. Um, and if you're a kindergarten teacher or a second grade teacher, you can kind of think about them and adapt them for your students. So for example, you can do ways to make a number. So here I have the number 17 and the first you know pair of students that comes up here, they can write down any which way that they see to make 17. Maybe they will write 10 plus seven. And then when the next group comes up and they have a different color marker, I like to give a different color marker to each pair of students. That way when you come all together as a class and talk about it, um, they can, it helps you identify who wrote what. And then another student might write, you know, 20 minus three. As you can see, there are a bunch of different ways students could actually write this, and this is going to build upon your number talks that you've been having all year long. So students should be familiar with this type of activity. So that's like a number sense type of problem. Of course, there's many different operations problems you can do up here. Here I have nine plus five plus three plus two. And again, using our math talks that we've done throughout the year, my students have learned many different ways they could go ahead and solve this. So they will record their answers right underneath with their color marker. You can see that one group of students might have seen the three plus the two is a five, and that's going to be a doubles fact. So five plus five equals 10, which then plus the nine equals 19. And then again, there's a few other ways that students can go up and solve. You can have a ton of different operation sheets out there. You can have double digit addition. You can have some trickier subtraction problems. That one had four different add-ins. There's just so many different ways you can use that. A story problem is also a great one to put up there, have students read the story problem, and then they can show how they solved it underneath. For some geometry, you can have students name an item that is the shape of a circle. This could be a sphere or a cube. It could be a triangle, anything you want. Have them name a real life item. You could also have them show half of something on their board so they can go ahead on the paper and draw half of something. And then also for some measurement, here's an example of name something longer and shorter than a pencil. So together with their partner, they have to come up with some different items that are longer than and shorter than a pencil. And of course, based on when they get over to that chart paper, they will always challenge themselves to come up with a new answer than what has already been displayed. Now, just a couple ground rules before you get started. And especially in grades K and one, you'll wanna make sure you go over each of the chart papers with your students uh, before sending them off to do this activity. This lessens all the questions about what the question's asking and you can clarify anything. In second grade, your students will be able to read it better and they'll be able to know what to do independently. So you can just tell them to go ahead with their partners to each of the stations. Now it's up to you how you do this. You can set like a 
two minute timer and have students rotate through. You could have them kind of do a little free for all and if they see an empty chart paper, they can go over there or they can quietly wait their turn for a chart paper, but you want to make sure they try and reach all of the stations. Most of these are going to be easy enough to solve within about two minutes, and your goal with your students should be they need to discuss together what the answer is before they write anything down. So that's one of the ground rules as well. With their partner, they need to decide on what they're going to write because both pairs should, both partners in the pair, should be able to express their answer if asked at the end of the activity which brings us to the end of the activity. After students have rotated through, this whole thing should take about 15, 16 minutes. Have them rotate through. You bring all the papers back to a central area. That's option number one. Depending on the layout of your classroom, I also like to have everybody kind of walk over to each section and gather around it. And then we look at the different answers and I'll call on some different pairs to share their reasoning. So review activity number one is a solve the room. It's a fun one that gets all of your students involved and you can really review a whole lot of topics at one time. All right, math review activity number two for the end of the year is to use one of my fun math mysteries. Now, I came out with a bunch of these over the course of the last year and I plan on coming out with so many more this summer. I Love them, I've gotten great feedback about them, and they are available in both printable and digital versions. So let me just show you a video of how it works. So here is just one of my math mysteries. This is probably one I would do for the end of year um, first grade. Well, again, depending on groups, you can do it by skill. So this one specifically is a double digit addition problem without regrouping, so no regrouping. It's called Our Summer Picnic Problem. They each have their own little theme, and I always like to store, th store them in a folder like this, just an easy file folder, and it has the title on the front. Then, when you open it inside, each one has its own card, which I'll show you in a second. There are clues. All these white paper and pencil ones are clues here. They have all the clues, and then this is the recording sheet for the end. So let me show you how this works. Each math mystery comes with its own story that usually the teacher will read aloud, but you could also print it out and keep it in the file folder if you wanted to. Um, in this case, all these students have gone to, or this group of friends has gone to the beach and they mixed up their picnic baskets and they need to find out which one belongs to each student. So in every mystery, there's always going to be something that needs to be matched to the other one. And in order to solve the mystery, we're gonna have to do some math work. So here you can see students will line up all of the, uh, the people and they will line up the different picnic baskets and we're gonna find out which ones match. Each little child here has its own clue that we're going to solve to find out which one matches. So let's pick a student, let's start with Mia here and let's find Mia's basket. So let me move these out of the way. We have Mia and here is Mia's clue which was in the file folder. As you can see at the top, it says, let's find Mia's basket. It matches the person, just so we know. And in order to find it, we're gonna have to do some double digit addition and subtraction. So in order to do this, they need to solve each problem. We have 36 minus 20, that's going to equal 16, but we're not gonna write 16 up here. We need to go to the key and find out which letter equals 16. So here we have the letter T equals 16, okay? 25 plus 33, we're gonna have 58 W. Now, let me go ahead and zoom through this so you can see what the clue looks like. Okay, so we solved our clue, but as you can see here, it doesn't just tell us what basket. We have one more clue we have to put together to get the answer. So Mia's basket is 20 plus seven, which of course we know equals 27. So we find that over here and we have matched Mia and her picnic basket. Once students do that, they can move this clue. Always feel free to uh, laminate these if you'd like to reuse them and especially laminate the answer key because once we do that, we can find Mia down here and we will write 20. Seven. Now, like I said, I love these because you can do them independently. If students wanted to work on these by themselves, they can slowly go through the clues and whatever they don't finish, they can store in the file folder. But you can also have students work in a group 
Maybe they're working with two or three students and they can go ahead and divvy up the clues to solve the mystery together. It's just a really fun way for them to review some skills. And I also have it in a digital version. Let me show you what that looks like. So here is the digital version in Seesaw. All of the math mysteries, when you purchase it, you will get a printable version, a digital version for Seesaw already preloaded, and also a version in Google uh, using Google Slides that's completely interactive. So the Seesaw one and Google are very similar. So let me just show you it here in Seesaw. Here is the uh, problem I was telling you about, the little story, a bunch of friends go on a summer picnic to the beach, but a big wave and comes and mixes up their picnic baskets. Then you can go through each child just so they can see them here. They're of course not gonna cut these out or anything. I'll show you how it works, but this is just to meet all the kids and for them to see all the picnic baskets. Now for their clues, since they are digital, um, there's actually a little beach scene here. And to go to each clue, they will just click on the link so they can start with whatever one they want. And this will also save their place. So let's start with this first one. It'll go to page 12. We just click it. Oh, Mia's basket. We just solved that one in the printable one. So here they will go ahead and using the marker or the pencil, they will again solve this in the same way that they did uh, in the printable version. So they have to actually solve the problem. Uh, they have to figure out the key, figure out what letter is going to each one. We know this is going to say 20 plus 7. And then they can use this. They can either write 27 up here or they can just drag the little picnic basket to know that this clue is done. Let me move myself over here for a sec. And then on the last page of this document down here, this is where they will show their answers. So they know Mia is 27. They will drag that there. Now, after they have solved that clue, they're going to go back to their beach scene and they're just going to drag a star over it to show that they've already done this one. That way, if it takes a couple days for them to solve the mystery, um, they know which clues they've already done. They don't have to click through each one. So then they can just go to another clue and solve. Now that of course was a double digit addition one for the end of year first grade without any regrouping. Um, you could also use that, you know, in second grade at the beginning of the year. I do have a bunch of different skills, including some addition with regrouping, um, just addition within 20, number sense ones, all different ones. I'll link all of the math mysteries down in the description below in case you want to check them out. And math review activity number three for the end of the year is to have a math scavenger hunt. Now I shared a whole video sharing all about this activity along with the free printables last year. The video looks like this. So if you want a lot more detail, I will link this video down in the description. But just to go over quickly what it's all about is you can have students do these independently or with a partner. And I love these because it's not only going to have students just solve a problem, but they're really going to show the problem in any sort of way that makes sense to them. So here's an example of the second grade board. And I made one for kindergarten first and second grade, just an example one. And also in the free download, you will have an editable one that you can either write in or type in whatever you'd like. And what students have to do is find, make, or draw any of these things. So to play this game, they will simply roll two dice and find the sum. When they find the sum, let's pretend they get a four, they will find it on their board and they have to make an array with three columns and four rows. And they can choose to do this however they want. They might want to go grab some cubes and go make the actual array. And I've always had my students do this with Seesaw in the past actually, because then they can actually take a picture of what they're learning, right? They can actually take a picture and share it in a Seesaw, which is is great because I can go back and look at every student's work because I won't get to see all of them do each and every activity, right? So it's great for me to be able to go back in there and see their learning. You can see here that if they rolled a six, they would have to find a number between 359 and 517. Now I do allow them to just grab a piece of paper and write down any number between that, but I do like to challenge my students to look around the classroom and see if they can find a picture of any of these things. For instance, number seven says two different shapes with four sides. I would like to have them look around the classroom and try to find two different shapes with four sides, but if they draw it, it is fine. I always let them know it's their choice. Just to show you some of the other ones, here's the kindergarten board. So we have two plus one if students rolled a two. And what they would do there is they would not just solve the problem, they would actually show it. So they might grab two cubes of one color and one cube of another color, or buttons, or maybe two pencils and a marker. However they want to represent it, they will go ahead and do that and then take a picture. 
Now, if your students don't have Seesaw or don't have some way to take a picture of their learning, again, they can always just grab a pencil and paper, and for each of those, they can write down the number and actually show it on there. So if they need to make an ABAB pattern, they can grab two different markers and make the pattern on their paper, or do it with cubes and take a picture. It's totally up to you, it's very flexible in that way. And again, I already shared this, but there is a completely editable version that you can either type into, or you can actually write into and make copies for your students, so you could do this over and over again, or just tailor it more to your students' needs. Similar to the solve the room activity, I like this one because it gets students up and moving around. You can have them do this with a partner or independently, again, up to you, but it just gets them moving, gets them having fun, and you can review many different things at one time. I'll make sure I link those math scavenger boards down in the description below. So there you have three of my favorite end of the year math review games that I think are going to be a lot of fun for your students. I've already said this nine times, but it gets them up and moving, which I love. In many cases, they can work together with their peers, which I love, and they get to review things from the whole year, which I love. I would love to know from you if you plan on trying any of these with your own students, let me know down in the comments, or if you've done any of them before, or if you have another math review game that you love to do with your kids, let me know in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you get notified of all my new videos, which right now I come out with a new one on Thursday and Sunday mornings. See you in the next one. Bye.